All right, so this is going to be the video for standard 0.2, which is on complex variables and functions. And here we chose to do problem one, and the question is, use the complex expansion of cosine to derive the trigonometric identity for cosine a minus b. And to do this, we're going to start with Euler's formula, which is one of the most important and well-known formulas in mathematics, and is just used all the time in different branches of science, such as physics, which we're doing here. So... And what's nice about the formula is it lets us relate the exponential function to the sum of two trigonometric functions when we're working in the complex plane. And the way to like prove or derive this formula is we use the Taylor expansion. And it's really nice and a very pretty argument. And the way it generally goes is we we set, we take the Taylor expansion for e to the x and we let x equal i theta. And when we expand this, it turns out because i squared equals negative one and i to the fourth equals one, the Taylor expansions for cosine and sine theta come out, but in, with a caveat that sine theta is scaled by a factor of i. But from here, we want to derive the complex expansion of cosine using this formula. So we're also going to just need this one other formula, which we can get really quickly from Euler's formula. That's e to the negative i theta and what it's equal to. And if we just plug in negative theta for theta above in Euler's formula, we get this, that cosine negative theta plus i sine theta, i sine negative theta is equal to e to the i negative i theta. And to get the form, the form of this that we want, we're going to use the evenness of cosine and the oddness of sine. And we can recall that a cos, that an even function, is, even function f, has a quality that f of x equals f of negative x, and an odd function has the quality that f of negative x equals negative f of x. So here we apply this, and the negatives of cosine goes away and the negative of sine gets pulled out and we get this result. And by adding these two formulas we note that we can get the expansion we're looking for which we're going to use to derive this identity. And that's that cosine theta equals the quantity e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta over 2. And one last thing we can note before we get the identity deriven, derived um, is that we can get sine theta as well using a similar process. We can actually subtract these two formulas and get that sine theta is equal to e to the i theta minus e to the negative i theta all over 2i. Okay, so now that we have all this, we can jump right into the main result that we're looking for. So, instead of plugging in theta above, we plug in a minus b into the cosine expansion. And we get that cosine of a minus b is equal to e to the i a minus b plus e to the negative i quantity a minus b all over 2. And we can just use the rules for powers of exponents and break this this like sum here into a product. And from here, we once again, we're going to use Euler's formula, which is no shock because we're working with these complex exponentials. So now we're going to get it into trigonometric form. We're going to get these, these two products here summed together all over 2 once again. And in order to get ready to multiply these two products together, um, basically what we're going to need to do is apply the evenness of sine and the oddness of, or the evenness of cosine and the oddness of sine, excuse me. But, so, basically we just drop the negatives in cosine and we pull out the negatives in sine again. And what's, basically what this is going to do is when we multiply these two things together, um, we're going to get a bunch of cross terms, and we're going to want things to cancel. And this allows us to easily pair up things, because now we're just going to have only positive inputs into our trigonometric functions. So, once we do that, I'm not going to do all, show all the math out, but basically the um, cosine, we get a cosine A, cosine B term from both of the two products, and a sine term from both, and all the other cross terms cancel. And then we have this all over 2, and we can see now that the 2s will cancel, and we get the common function that we've seen, or the common identity that we've seen in, trig in trigonometry classes, which is that the cosine of a minus b is equal to cosine a, cosine b, plus sine a, sine b. And the last thing I'll note before the end of this video is that Euler's formula can derive this identity, but it can also derive other things such as cosine a plus b. And one thing that we can get from there is that there's a double angle formula, which is one of the formulas that a lot of people forget when they need a trigonometric identity where it comes up in a math class or a physics class, etc. And this is really nice, and if you're ever in a pinch and you really need one of these formulas, you can come back to Euler's formula and derive cosine a plus b or sine a plus b and then get the double angle formulas that you need.
So that's the end of my video and thank you.